there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? <laughs> what an idiot! Well, what do you expect? I'm the movie moron. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I've ever heard. Don't call me stupid. Oh, right! To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people! I've known sheep that could outwit you. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. <laughs> man! are one pathetic loser. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no, none taken. That is right, none taken. I am the movie moron himself, and this is the movie moron podcast. <laughs> sometimes we have sound effects and sometimes we create them. Yeah, we do. Um, and before we start the episode, I have been forgetting to uh, do our selfish plugs, so uh, please rate and subscribe and we only have like five actual reviews on apple podcast and i know most of you are listening to apple podcast so i say please <laughs> rate and review it on apple podcast it really helps uh we have been growing up we've been going up on the algorithms when and growing search the and movie. we've been growing up yeah. growing and growing yeah um and so all of those help so if you like the podcast please rate it and review it and help us out so when people go and watch a new movie they search it up on Apple Podcast, and do, then do, do. boom, we're there. Search it up. And they can listen to our non-spoiler review. Non-spoiler. And our spoiler review. That's Spoilers. what we want. That is what we want. That's mm -hmm. what we want. And we do way more reviews than a lot of other people that I've seen on, on Apple yes. Podcast. What do we want? Reviews. Listens. Oh. Oh. We all said something else. We, you could tell that all this was very unplanned. Um, but like I said, please rate and, and review us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That's If that's where you're listening, that's where I personally listen. But, you know, wherever you're listening. And if you're on YouTube, for the few of you that are listening and watching on YouTube, we appreciate you. We're on the tubes. Yep. The YouTubes. Uh, comment on the, the, the videos. YouTubes. Yeah. Disagree yeah. with our opinions. Or agree. Or agree. But, oh. but also, I, I do welcome disagreement. Like, I, well, we don't have a whole lot of people Eason on YouTube right now. does not shy away no, from No, we don't have a whole lot debates. of people on YouTube right now. So, like, if you comment, I will probably respond. And we can have a little discourse on whether or not Dr. Strange is trash or not. So, <laughs> uh, but anyways, that's, that's the shameless plug there that uh, I had to do at the top of the episode because I haven't done it in, like, I don't know, 45 episodes. And it was so. shameless. Yeah. Nice um, shameless plug. And what a better movie to do it on and the movie that probably no one is watching. But anyways, uh, I uh -huh. am your host. Uh, I am your host, uh, Easton Moore, and I'm on the wrong thing here. But yeah, I'm your host, Easton Moore. I got no education. It's not true. I do have an education, but I feel like it fit. I didn't understand, I didn't understand it. A word I know. Can you play, play it one more time? It's Scarface. I got no education. Oh, I have no education. I got no education. Yeah, it's what I Scarface says. Can't get in the no. movie. That's a good movie. How do you watch that again? Mm -hmm. I mean, the only Sad. thing that anybody ever remembers. Shut from that up is to my little friend. I remember so many parts of that oh. movie. I remember when the guy gets killed in the bathtub. I remember Don't when spoil it. they infiltrate the apartment. That movie is like 40 years this old. This is okay? non-spoilers right now. I remember when he meets the guys and has his first, he gets his first little I'm sorry, step everyone. into the game in Miami. Welcome well, to Miami. The person, Miami, Miami, Miami. Miami. the person on the left who is ruining all of Scarface for anybody who hasn't seen it. Wow, rude. Is Come at me. Our practical co-host himself, Trevor Landreth. Mm. I love scotch. I love scotch. Scotch is got scotch. Here it goes down. Down into my belly. Mm -mm -mm. That was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> that's <was> pretty, <good. laughs> pretty fitting. Um, and then like, to uh, the right is the all time guest uh, and my lovely wife, Tristan. I want to say something. I want to put it out there. And if you like it, you can take it. If you don't, send it right back. Until you use me up. I want to be on you. <laughs> uh, 
I was like, I have no idea where this is going. <laughs> well, you're just telling the whole audience you've never seen one of the greatest comedies of all time, <laughs> The Anchorman. No, I've seen it. I know. Uh, I just don't remember anything from it, except so for the zoo. We were talking a little bit before the podcast. I was with Bra- I hung out with Brandy yesterday, yeah. and he said he had to like pause the podcast that was laughing out loud at the I shagged her <laughs> one that we did a few weeks ago mom that was said the first she one. was laughing too uh-huh. yeah, yeah we, we got a lot of feedback from the I shagged her so yep. I figured I gotta go back to the I give the people what they want give the people what they want I, I gotta tell everyone that the, the woman on the podcast <laughs> she mine and she's stuff not available stuff happens <sighs> so Ugh. um this week's episode is Firestarter a Stephen King remake movie? Because there is an original that I haven't seen Me either. Hmm. Although I hear the original's better. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, that's what you hear. That's what you hear. Is a lot of people are saying the original is better. Um, but a lot of people say that about a lot of the Stephen King remakes that have been happening over the last like five weeks or so, right? Or five weeks, five years. Like, there's been a lot of Stephen King remakes over the past five years. Yeah. And- it. Uh, other ones. Well, there's Pet Cemetery. Oh, Pet Cemetery. Pet right. Cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. Misery. Well, we're talking about remakes, but oh. Pet, Pet Cemetery, Cemetery is a remake. There, yeah. There's another one. I can't remember what it is. It wasn't Carrie, or is Carrie? It was Carrie. Yeah, yeah Carrie's a remake. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't know if it's Stephen King or not. It is mm-hmm. Suspiria. Stephen King? No, I, oh, I'm okay. just saying movies. <laughs> but nonetheless, like this is uh, another one of Stephen King's Please, novels I think it's Stephen King. that are uh, huh? At least I think Carrie is Stephen King. I don't think it is, if but it doesn't matter. If only one of us had a phone. If I would have remembered to bring my iPad, then you could have had your phone, Tristan. You know, I'm but like juggling you? four different electronics <laughs> okay, right sorry. now to keep this thing going and as well also hosting. This, so this is, As well also. Yeah, you're our, doing a great job, Easton. Our rig is very much like just ghetto Easton rig shit. together. <laughs> It's Easton do everything, but that's hey, okay. That's the point. You, yeah. No, no. You it's didn't totally ask okay. us to do anything. At some point, it'll be more relegated but at the Relegated. moment I'll, re- is- I'll remember to send you descriptions right after the podcast <laughs> for real because i yeah i you actually you uploaded multiverse and i was like oh i forgot <laughs> yeah i just did I it yeah forget. but it's okay uh because i wanted to get it out and i i knew you were busy but it doesn't matter we're doing firestarter which is a stephen king uh book that was made into a movie and this is a remake of it and it is starring uh zach, zach Efron, Efron. and it is also starring Ryan Kira Armstrong, which is a child actress that has also been in Black Widow, It, The Tomorrow War, Racing in the Rain, and this. So, holy she, cow! Yeah, she's done a lot of stuff before, uh, but this is actually the first thing. No, I've seen Black Widow, of course. I, I think didn't she, know I, Zach Efron was in it, and I was like, "What? Really? Ask you yeah, she, I was all about Daddy Zachary. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I wanted to see this movie. I hate that you just said that so much. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I I kind of agree, but... Agree what? Daddy. Okay, d- don't, Daddy don't say it. Daddy Zach. You can, Daddy you Zach. can say... Dude, we already have Daddy Oscar Isaac oh, cemented yeah. in yeah, the do. history of this podcast. So it makes might me well so add, uncomfortable when people add Daddy to the front of names. Yeah, well, this movie doesn't hide away from calling people Daddy, including Zach Efron himself. So... What? He's called Daddy a lot. A lot. Really? So I think I'd it's kind of leaning into it. I didn't even notice it. it. You guys are just simping over Zac Efron. Well, yeah, when probably. somebody literally says, I'm coming, Daddy, to Zac Efron, it was kind of hard to... It's a, it was a child. I know, but it was also... Are we not doing phrasing anymore? Is that not a thing? What? <laughs> you want ants? Because this is how you get ants. <laughs> it's an anchor, uh, 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 Archer, Archer reference. Yeah, yeah. I'm so confused. <laughs> they they have a very popular thing in the TV show where if you say something that's weird, you say phrasing. Phrasing. And um, it's basically like a that she said kind of the thing. The only thing I know like, about Archer is that by the Bob's Burgers guy. Yeah. Plays yeah. Archer. Like but, if I were to say something along the line, so I'm going to say a phrase that might be taken a different way, and then Easton will respond with the proper saying. So I was in a line at a taco bar today, and I was like, "What do you think? Should I go with a hard or a soft one?" Uh, phrasing. Let's see, that's so dumb. Or I liked it. Do you like hard ones or soft ones? Mm, phrasing. Anyway, but the whole point. Anyways, <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> I heard that line and I was definitely thinking in my head phrasing and it was even worse that it came from a child because I'm like if you're writing this movie with dialogue 
You yeah. shouldn't be having it, a twelve year old child say, "Daddy, I'm coming." That's just it's. You gotta be aware of the of the generational sexual tendencies of America. <laughs> yes, exactly. Anyways, way off topic. Well, not off topic because it is <laughs> it's about the movie. The movie. <laughs> But uh, we're getting into general thoughts that we haven't even got into yet. So, yeah, general thoughts. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, Firestarter? You guys have tainted it for me. I have no opinions. Phrasing. Yes, you do. I'm not going first, though. I never go first. Oh, That's sorry. You do. Always go first. I do. Yeah. Uh, this. <laughs> so, you know what? Something funny. This movie was ultimately forgettable. Like, I, I saw it. Thursday or Friday? Friday night. Okay. At 1030, which is not the latest I've gone to see a movie. No, you saw Multiverse of Madness at like 1230. Yeah. Started. Yeah. At 1230. Uh, and I think I fell asleep during this, but I woke up and don't feel like I missed anything. I mean, you probably did. Yeah. Like the movie is pretty fast paced. Yeah. To be honest. Like, I guess we'll find out as we go. I But a majority of the movie is all within like. 24 hours 48 hours yeah i think it's like yeah a couple days so like you might have missed a little i mean you maybe may fell asleep at the perfect moment yeah but and i think that's what i think that's ultimately what happened but we could we as, as, i guess if there's something that comes up that i don't remember then we could be like oh there it is but yeah yeah i don't know i ultimately <clears throat> forgettable i yeah and i really wanted to enjoy this i actually would kind of had i was kind of excited for this and it was it was kind of a letdown i I thought Zac Efron was fine <laughs> on like the lower end of fine. I thought they all were like, and I, I really didn't. And uh, I don't want to get into all the spoilery. That's all spoilery. It stuff, was but. weird seeing Zac Efron as the dad of a, yeah, like a girl that old. Right. I, I did. However, he's John, like 30 something. No, I no, yeah. It makes okay. sense for him, but like, we're used to seeing him as a young he's adult. Been in, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, because the last movie I remember him in was uh, uh, Neighbors, where he's like a college frat boy. He still has the body to be a college kid in this I movie. Think, uh, I think the last movie I saw him in was Baywatch. Mm. Yeah, that's so. fair. Um, John Carpenter is one of the the composers on this. He did the Halloween score. So all that like piano-y stuff and like the final act. Yeah, I really did enjoy that. That was probably my favorite part of the whole movie was the all the John Carpenter all the stuff. musical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. My turn? Yeah. This reminded me of either a um a better quality Bible man. Oh my god. <laughs> or, or a very, very poorly done X Men movie. Oh, I agree and I hate it. I hate that I agree. That's all I could think of. Oh, so, so funny. Look, she's out of line, <laughs> but she's right. I didn't catch any of those, but I mean. You didn't get those vibes? I totally did. I, especially no. toward the end where they're in the like the yeah. facility. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess I kind of get like X-Men The Last Stand vibes a yeah. little bit, but like, like he, she does kind of act like Jean Grey. Just her ultimate power yeah i did not like the, the woman no the, no. the kid oh yeah. okay um yeah well when you were saying that you thought it was giving you vibes of a different movie i thought for sure you were going to go towards brightburn and that's what i thought the whole movie oh. i thought this gave me heavy brightburn I vibes i forgot about that movie honestly is yeah. that where the kid turns into a villain he wears the bag over his head or yeah. Sack. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah, he. It's supposed to be a. Uh, uh, if Superman turned evil. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel kind of like that's kind of what. This what like not yeah. not it's not the same thing. Yeah. But it was giving me that vibe the whole time, but less horror. Like that Brightburn yeah. was supposed to be a horror. Yeah. yeah. And this was more of like drama. Right. Uh, yeah. Aspect of it. And yeah, ultimately, like nothing was like, uh, like fantastic. It was mm -hmm. pretty average. The dialogue was pretty rough at times, yeah. but yeah. at the same time, like, um, I don't think it was a bad story. And uh, it's it's really hard to write a movie around a kid actor. I yeah. I, I agree. <clears throat> 
Like I, so I don't fault them too much, but you're also like you put yourself in a hole doing that by like choosing to do that. Yeah, there have been yeah. few movies. Like I get like the story makes sense because she's a child, but like you're putting yourself where like so much weight is on a child actress. Yeah, and it's, there's only been a few movies that I think have really excelled, and the actress that I thought this kid was is not the same person, but the one act like gifted i don't know if you guys have mm-hmm. seen that or not it's uh that is another very heavily driven child actor movie and that actually was really like she did great mm-hmm. and it was really good but it's not the same person but. you want to know another really good child actor movie wonder the good son oh, okay. oh. <laughs> elijah wood and macaulay culkin as little boys i actually rewatched so jurassic good. park recently Trash. and that the kids in that are are mm. refreshingly they're okay okay yeah i mean they're not like they could have been so bad and they weren't. And so yeah. the uh, best, I think the best, I think everybody can kind of agree with it. the best child acting movie of all time is probably My Girl. I think uh, I've seen My Girl. Stranger you haven't seen that movie? Mm-hmm. That's Macaulay Culkin too. Stranger Things has good kid actors. Yeah. Yeah. Am that, I right? They're a little bit older. That's Macaulay That's Culkin, fair. right? I'm going to make a look. I, I feel like it is. But yeah, I get that. Wow. I get that in this. And then he grew up to be on they, drugs. <laughs> yeah, Macaulay Culkin what? and Anna Chomsky. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they put a lot on her to to drive the narrative weight of the story. I wish this is what I wish that she when was like a teenager, like fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, I feel like that would have like, given it a lot more. Because she's like eleven or twelve, and yeah, right, they, or maybe they, in ten. They, they were yeah. going for like it was like preteen, a puberty thing, yeah. kind of like with what uh, what we just had with uh, red. turning red, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it wasn't really needed. You you could have yeah. had angsty teen that worked just as well, yeah. Um, like I get the I get the narrative choice, mm-hmm. but you're you, like I said, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. I just working think it would have made so much more sense. If yeah. she was a little bit older. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, altogether, I do think it was a pretty Meh. <sighs> yeah, meh. Um Meh is good. Like I, I I had some like fun with a lot of it. Um, but the but then like other times it was pretty rough. Um I did like I did think the the fire CGI stuff was really well done. Mm. Um, that's what was giving me Bible man vibes. <laughs> like it didn't look good to you? No, it didn't look great to me either. Mm. I, I, well, I take I that back. I also don't know what it would look like if it was good. So. Like the when it's when things are on fire, it looks better. But when she like projects it, yeah, that I was kind of like, that. nah, that's fair. Um, that's what I was thinking. It's like when she mm-hmm. when when she puts things on fire, mm-hmm. like. It just erupts, and like usually with fire, there's a buildup, yeah. And like, so there's not that, but there's also not supposed to be, mm. yeah. And I also think they did a good job with the uh, with the editing CGI, whatever, for the heat. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. When she was yeah, when things were heating up, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think they did a good job with that. And yeah. like you could you could tell things were escalating just by that in general, yeah. and that was well done. Um, but all in all, you, you you're gonna have some really standard tropes, sure. and it's like, yeah. I was a little disappointed because this is uh, Blumhouse. Yeah, and, I was too. Mm-hmm. And Blumhouse does some really good stuff. They did upgrade your favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is actually when I thought that their uptick was coming because they also yeah. did uh, yeah. uh, 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 Happy. F- the happy oh, death happy death day! Happy yeah, death day. That's oh. um, I believe they did Invisible Man. Yep, um, they did Whiplash. They did the Purge series. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, um, but they've done like a they've done a lot of like different horror, because mm-hmm. like, yeah. you have your standard horror stuff, and those are usually like either big publisher stuff or mm-hmm. like nobody's. Oh, and they did like Insidious and Sinister too. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. and Blumhouse seems to do some like really like uh, creative horror yeah mm-hmm. and so i was really excited i thought that's yeah. kind of what we were gonna and it was a pretty like it wasn't horror at all this is not a horror movie at all if you don't like horror that you're not gonna be scared yeah. of, me of that it's more of just superpower like it it is at the level of x-men like that's yeah. the kind of power that they yeah. have 
I actually didn't know that going in. Because I don't know anything about the story. All I knew is this girl has some fire. Or yeah, something. she can create fire and she can't control it. I didn't know yeah. squat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Going into the movie, all you have to like that's yeah. a, that's a good base to know. It's yeah. a child that can create fire and she can't control it, and so all the complexities that come with that. Um, <laughs> and yeah, what? In, in any young child, all the complexities that come with <laughs> being able to start your fire on your own. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the Blumhouse house thing, the black phone is the next one we're getting from them. I think that will come to us. <laughs> and that looks like a very different. Yeah. It, but cool. after seeing this, I was kind of like, I hope it's better. Yeah. Whenever I see a movie from a producer or something like that, which that's what Blumhouse is, is a producer yeah, production company. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't get turned off from the studio. Mm. When I see a bad one, because I know that like they're not writing the movie. That's fair. They just like it's they're just backing like the it. backers. Yeah, they're putting money into it to try to uh, see if it'll succeed, and they they have a feeling that it's it's a good project. And sometimes sure. it is, and sometimes it's not. It's always a gamble. Yeah, like anything is a gamble in the movie industry. Right. You don't know what's gonna succeed and what's gonna fail. I mean, we just had a Marvel movie. And the beginning of Marvel, like uh, Disney or whatever, bought Marvel for uh, scraps because yeah. they didn't like it wasn't making any money before. Mm-hmm. So they were like, we can just sell this. And yeah. and they made something out like it was a, a gym or whatever. Yeah. So like you never know what you're mm-hmm. going to get right. out of something until you try it. So I don't mind if like sometimes things are going to be hits and some th- sometimes they're going to be misses and. Doesn't stop me unless like yeah, everything sure. that comes out is garbage. Bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I know like uh like uh, I was having a Twitter debate, not debate, but like I was talking to somebody on Twitter the other day and um somebody was trashing not trashing, but kind of had a backhanded comment towards A twenty four. Uh they were like, Everyone's giving A twenty four all the praise, but um, well, it's because they do good stuff. <laughs> well they're like A twenty four is getting all the praise, but what about Neon? And like, <laughs> neon, but neon's done some great. They do. They've yes. done some great <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And I was like, we don't need to bash a twenty four to praise neon. Yeah. Like, like okay, they both be good. I was like, when I see a twenty four and when I see neon, I know I'm about to see something good. Yeah. And I was having a conversation with somebody, and like, they also said, um, like, <laughs> don't forget focus features. Like, mm. when I see focus features comes up, I'm. I know that something good is about to happen. Like, I know like it's going to be high quality, yeah, and it has a high chance of being a good movie. They did a pretty good one recently. I can't remember what it was though. We were we were read it here. I can't remember, but wait, you need to look it up. It's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's going crazy. Yeah, I keep scratching him. He keeps begging for Mo. Um, yeah, I like the family the family dynamic and. I I won't say why because it is a spoiler, but we don't get a lot of it. But I did a, a, a lot of the scenes where like they did get to, just to be a family and have conversations that were like, okay, you know, like there's a moment where he that uh, where Daddy Zach comes out and he's like, he's like, are you okay? I had a bad dream. Yeah, me too. And then she's like, my body feels weird. And he's like, oh, do I need to get your mother? Like that, like that stuff. That it just feels kind of like you know. Not wholesome necessarily, but you know, I mean, yeah, no, no. I I also like the family dynamic pretty quite a bit. And I like the backstory that they do with it. Yeah. I thought that was uh, interesting because I wasn't expecting it. I I wasn't either. I hadn't read the book. I didn't really know what, like what caught. So like, I I liked how they did that. Yeah. You were talking about focus films. Focus films did the Northmen. Northmen. That's what it was. They also did licorice pizza, last night in Soho and the outfit. Oh, very and nice. We both liked the outfit. We did like the outfit. Yeah. It had some problems, but yeah. good overall. Yeah. Um, I really don't know what else to say spoiler free wise. Neither. Um, but it's I, I thought most of it like I enjoyed it, but it was pretty basic in a lot of its delivery. So Yeah. Kinda kinda know that you're not getting something great, but you might get something you kind of yeah. Enjoy. Recommendations? Nope. Oh. Nah. Oh. 
Uh, I don't know. Like it's you can recommend it. Yeah, yeah. Let's sway you. I think it's a fine movie to go watch for a weekend. Nothing crazy, but if you want something a little bit more action with a little bit of drama, I enjoyed my time. Except for our fucking theater experience. <laughs> Before we go to yeah. spoilers, we had somebody with a flashlight on on their cell phone. Facing the screen. For about 10 minutes until I yelled at them, can you turn off your cell so- uh, I looked out and noticed they had their phone sitting up on their chair with the flashlight pointed at the screen. Yeah. And then I saw it and Trist and then like Tristan didn't notice it, but she eventually did. Mm -hmm. She looked at it. I looked at it again. It was still on and we could see like, yeah, they were like, you could see hand fingers all over the screen because they had a flashlight pointing at it and they were moving around. They're also talking a shit ton. So much. That's crazy. And uh, like like loud. Like, yeah. And so they had the flashlight on and this was after like talking a bunch. What's like a kid or something? No. No. no, Full adult. There were three of them. Yeah. And I eventually was like, can you turn off your flashlight, please? And, uh, I felt like somebody else in the theater said, yeah, yes. the guy next to me was like, yeah, for real. Yeah. And, um, they didn't at first and I was about to go get, I walk, I got up and I was going to go get an attendant yeah. and be like, yeah, yeah. Get Take them out. Of these people yeah. <laughs> because they were talking. Yeah. They have a flashlight on. Yeah. Facing the screen. Yeah. And later I realized they were probably filming the movie. Yeah. And right. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's what they were doing. And then they also accepted three different FaceTime calls in the movie theater. Oh, my god. And the goodness. person on FaceTime was talking to them out loud so while they, they were in the theater. They, they left the theater. They would get the FaceTime call. They would accept it and then walk out of the theater. Yeah. So you would hear them talking as they were leaving the theater. And this happened <laughs> they three left, times. Th- and they left and came back probably five or six yeah. times. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It was so annoying. Uh, I like I've had some bad theater experiences, but this was I'm just glad we weren't sitting next to them. Yeah. The people that were behind uh b- right behind them and yeah. that were next to uh us mm-hmm. that I guess yelled mm-hmm. out. Yeah. They left about forty five minutes in. Yeah. Oh, I bet. They they were yeah. Right. Just done. Yeah. And I was like, I don't blame you. So, yeah, that was probably the worst part of the movie because it was hard to like get into stuff because. Yeah. You got someone to shine a flashlight on the screen. That's crazy. Yeah. And I heard them at one time complaining. Oh, yeah. To about uh, my guess is me saying to them to turn shut off. off their. Well, yeah. when the guys next to us, when they left, they were calling them names. Oh, my God. As they were leaving. I oh, heard that. I thought they were talking to me, talking about me. Oh, I, 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 I bet you that's because they said something. Probably when, when I when I told them to shut off their flashlight, mm-hmm. they they said something, and so they were probably yeah mad at them. It's like, don't go to a fucking movie theater. Yeah, it, like I'm- I I really encourage people to go to movie theaters because I want them to stay alive. Yeah. First and foremost, yeah. mm-hmm. but also I think it's a better experience to watch a movie. Yeah, like yeah. for the most part, like seeing it on a big screen, getting the sound, like you're a hundred percent invested in the movie. Yeah. Like at home, like it's like this. Also, is probably a part of my ADHD, but it's it's hard to fully focus. Mm. And so at a movie theater, I am I have to be a hundred percent toned in. Yeah, and so it's it's a better experience for me with all, with all of it like the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I really encourage people to do it, especially if you can like if you have a warrant, you have an AMC that allows you to do the deals where yeah. you can watch two to three movies well, and for like, only it's something to do 18 and to it's 20. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um but no, I would tell those people to never come to a theater again. And if no. I had the ability to kick them out of AMC for the rest of their lives, I would tell AMC to do it because yeah. they don't deserve to be there. And if if I would like, if I would have thought that they were recording the movie, I wouldn't have said anything, and I would have gotten gone to go someone. I would have got somebody to be like, "Oh, hey, by the way, you have three people in the corner who have been talking. They also have been filming the movie." Yeah, yeah, and they would have been kicked out. And they would have been banned. Yeah, and but I, I didn't. Th- I thought they were just dumbasses. <laughs> I thought they were just dumbasses. When I first saw the I flashlight, ignorant. 
I thought they were old people like trying to see. And yeah, because so some of them have like the flashlight like to ring their phone or whatever. No, that's that's what I thought yeah. too. I thought that they were like uh, they had pulled out a flashlight to like find their candy yeah. and like right. get some, yeah. um, which is, which happens and like yeah. it like is it's annoying, but it. it's yeah. whatever. But it's like, two seconds. Yeah, and then they and and most of those people are like aware of what they're doing. Yeah, and so like so they try to, to hide quick. it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, and then like you're out of it for like five to 10 seconds but then like it's over and what you're right back into me it was when their hands they started moving their hands like the light was flashing and they were their hands were moving around it like when you make <laughs> puppet shadows Jeez. and that's when i was like okay no and it was happening on screen because yeah. they're flashing it on the screen yeah, yeah. and so it also so made the color of the screen different because they had a flashlight on it yeah so it made it lighter yeah i i can't believe we almost talked about the movie without Talking about the worst. <laughs> we've had, uh-huh. uh, we go to the theaters a lot. So like, it's probably disproportionate. But we've had some pretty rough theater experiences. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because when we watched The Northman, we had a bad experience of, yeah. I had somebody on their phone for their first 45 minutes, mm-hmm. like full brightness <laughs> and talking with their partner right next to me the whole entire time. I'm and like, why one, are you at the movies? That's what I don't get. Why? Yeah. Like, if you're you're literally going to answer a FaceTime in the middle of the movie three times, wouldn't it be so much easier to be at home watching a movie so you can answer your dumb right. FaceTime? Like, well, you're also not watching the movie and you yeah. spent you spent like a decent amount of money. Yeah. Like we don't spend technically any money for the movie we watch. Like we spend we money. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. We're buying a subscription, so like we're not paying to watch it specifically, right. but also like it's not yeah it's not like we're paying for that specific movie yeah Yeah. but like if i go to the movie i want to make sure that i saw the movie right (laughs) unless you're me and you fall asleep and i'm not hurting anybody when i do that yeah unless i snore snore. and then easton wakes me up i do wake her up because i don't want anybody else to yeah i know it it sucks to be next to somebody and they're snoring like like hell (sighs) yeah (laughs) which i have had like i've i have been next to somebody that that has snored like that before and it's a, it's a little annoying but anyways we, i don't need to rant anymore uh that's probably been half of our podcast so far as me <laughs> ranting on that but it, it was ridiculous said, and I had AMC a plus experience ban them oh ban them for life ban them for life okay uh so there's our recommendations Do it. don't go watch the movie with people that are trying to record the movie and <laughs> flashlighting and talking the whole entire time yeah, but if you can real. avoid that I say it's okay. They say don't recommend it. And I do understand, like, not wanting to spend, like, is it worth $12? Probably not. But for me. I mean, maybe. Uh, yeah. I just yeah. think if it was. You, yeah. If you think it's fine. But, like, if I'm refining my recommendation, I would say, like, watching it at home, like, when it comes out. Yeah. It's fine. Which is totally fair. I just, like, if you want to know the movies and this is on the docket, like, it's, it's whatever, totally, yeah. like, it's a serviceable movie. It's not atrociously, it's not bad in my yeah. opinion. So like it wouldn't be a bad movie to watch. Like you would enjoy some stuff and if, you know, it, but whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the end of the uh, spoiler free. If you stick around for another 10 seconds, <laughs> you can listen to the spoiler part of the review. So we will be right back. All right, and we're back. We're back. After that, <laughs> no ad because we haven't had ads for a little bit because Anchor hates us. Anchor, why do you hate us? We gave you so much ads for so long. <laughs> and then you just. So much ads. So, so much, much ads. ads. Like a hundred ads. And you just decided to this leave us. This is how you repay us? Rude. <laughs> Rude. Dang. R O O D. If I had that sound clip ready to go rude (laughs) no uh, and this is how you repay us oh that's a quote but it's okay uh we're gonna do the spoiler part of the review so if you haven't seen this movie and you care you probably won't um because this is a small movie but if you do care go ahead and pause it and come back to us so spoiling the movie spoiled it talk about the biggest spoiler right off the bat go 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What is, spoiler uh, bar, what do you want to talk about? Uh, I, I thought it was stupid that the mom died so early. I thought that was rough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because that's I thought that was a really good part. I okay, so two things I thought that was stupid that happened in the beginning. Number one was the mom dying. Number two, I really didn't care that they I wish they would have waited to tell us more about like the the lot six treatments and things as it went on. Um, instead of just that like beginning just, like, blurb vomiting it at us in the beginning. Um, which was because it, it set up this really cool world that I wanted to know more about and I wanted to be invested in. Yeah. But it was just kind of like Here's everything. Go kind of yeah. thing. I think they didn't want that to be the focus of the movie, and I think they also wanted this movie to be pretty short. Okay. And I think that's why they did it. So like I agree. I really like like the at the beginning the all the like cuts of the CR footage yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like seeing all that was pretty cool, but it it doesn't really explain everything. Right. Or really much. Mm-hmm. Um, which just, sometimes sometimes is good. Like yeah. you don't want everything to be explained, but in this instance, it's pretty pivotal. Like because that's this is what directly happened to our characters, mm-hmm. and you don't see what directly happened to them because it also looked like most of them got murdered. Yeah, and like so, how did they escape? And like that could have been done in like two to three minutes, and I right. think it would have felt more smooth, and like you would have appreciate the characters a little bit more yeah if you got a little bit more of that backstory to for it sure. yeah i yes and i liked the it, for as much as the dialogue was kind of mid i did like that kind of turn of like you know they're, they're saying she says something like she moves something with her mind or she i don't remember what it was but i like zach efron's character it says i watched my parents die and he's like yeah so he's like no no i saw it like a week before it actually happened yeah that like that was a cool like turn moment um, even though it was like a few seconds, I appreciated that line. I wish we could have gotten more insight on the parents' powers <laughs> because I felt like I was, I, it was like a mystery. I was trying to figure it out. Um, I kind of like how they time. revealed it yeah. because it was, because it was, uh, it was over because the first time you see Zach's power, first of all, you don't even know that they have right yeah. powers or yeah. not. You assume that they have something because of that opening montage, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you, and well, uh, they also showed placebos, so you don't know if they right. were yeah. uh, part of the placebo stuff. Right. Um, but with the smoker, mm-hmm. that's when you get the yeah. first stuff. Um, and then they kind of talk, and you you tell that the mother doesn't really want to use her powers. Yeah. Uh, then you see it when the assassin comes. Yeah. Which I love the assassin. Really, I thought it was. A, a little basic at times yeah but um i thought he was i thought he was well done i don't like yeah. i'm I not agree. gonna say he was john wick level right but i think he was kind of in that like he was in the ballpark of john wick of like mysterious but cool and still personable yeah and so i liked his arc um, maybe maybe not uh, John Wick as much, but maybe Leon the Professional. And I oh, think sure. maybe that's yeah. what I was getting the vibes of, and I liked yeah. that. Just goes in and does does a job and gets out. Yeah, and yeah. then something clicks on one of his jobs where he uh, gets yeah. burned. What? <laughs> okay, burned fire starter. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Tristan's tired. We're uh, I'm sorry. I'm we're really we're past sorry. our bedtime by about an hour and a half. So sorry, everyone. Um, but I don't. I I liked his uh, uh character. More we got of him, the more I liked him, and I think it was a little predictable. I, yeah. Well, yeah. I wish he would have talked a little bit more. If I'm being honest, you probably like that he didn't talk that much. Yeah. But, yeah. but I I I get what you mean. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I did like the, him the too. scene that we had where he was kneeling. Mm-hmm. Is that what you kind of mean? You wish he had like said something there. Wait, kneeling what? Where? Um, he knelt in front of uh our main character, which I can't. Re- oh, Chloe. Mm-hmm. That That's her end? name, right? Chloe. Sure. Claire. Was, sure. Okay. What is that? Was that the end? Yeah. Okay. He kneels in front of her to like accept death. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right. And yes. he doesn't say anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of expecting him to be like, I'm sorry. I like, I accept like yeah. my yeah. punishment. I also, yeah. 
Um, better better writing than that. But like I ex- <laughs> something like that. Sure, sure. I that's that's another reason that I wish she was a little bit older because like at the end when she's running I'm like bro, you can't do anything. <laughs> You're like 11. What are you going to you don't if you don't have your dad like what you going to do? You can't trust anybody. Kill everyone. Right. Yeah, yeah well, right, like when she was in the building, she was killing everybody, and I'm like, "Good luck!" Like, I mean, she. You're gonna get a job. <laughs> you gonna like? I was so confused, and then when I mean, she like, this is a super spoiler, but when she in, we're in spoilers. Uh, yeah, we're in spoilers. I know, but it, I'm jumping to the end. That's no, fine. it's fine. I jumped to the end with the when yeah. when he like picks her up and takes her. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I was like, okay, it's yeah, see, you and have I feel to like- partner with somebody because you're. 10. Yeah. And I feel like that's very Stephen King to be like, oh, the assassin that killed my mother is really going to be my caretaker in the end kind of thing. Mm. Um, but I do feel like it was natural because. No, I agree. Yeah. But because it, the, because it was the just, assassin was like, I thought that it was a little cheesy of like, once you meet her, you'll understand. Yeah. So like that was a little cheesy, but I liked that like uh, he was doing a job. And then, like, something clicked when he was on the job, and he's like, I don't want to follow yeah. through with this part of it. Right. And then, like, he regrets what he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify, the dad, cause so the psychic power he has is the push. Um, does he push her to kill him and the lady? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what, I, that's what I thought happened. But I, I think that was around the time when I woke up again. And I oh, was she missed quite a bit up there. I think I just missed her fighting through the the building. Yeah. I think because the last thing I remembered was she doesn't fight through the building really. Okay, so the last thing I she remembered sneaks. was after I oh they they're with the guy that that picks them up off the road and he's caring for them. Oh, I like him. I did you too. Missed a lot. Hank, well, Hank, yeah. So that was the last thing I remembered, and then I woke up and it, and it was oh. he, she was fighting through the building. You fell asleep for like a solid 25 minutes, that dude. That was a lot. Oh, really? What did <laughs> yeah. I miss? You missed a lot. Well, what did I miss? Someone tell me. You I'm not. Missed- listen, I'm not going to go back and see this movie. Somebody just tell me. When did you... Uh, did you fall when asleep when they got, when he got in the... Up? No, no, no. When they, when they shot him. When they shot... Oh. When they captured everybody okay. oh i thought you meant when he got picked up no I no i saw too. no i saw the part where he where they you know he wakes up and the guy is watching the news and he's like did you sleep at all and he's you're the guy for the blah gotcha. blah blah okay I, so you didn't mi- you probably fell asleep for like eight to ten minutes then. okay and, and you didn't Good. miss like it was mainly just her like trying to decide how to like live by herself without her dad okay and then um, because the, the guy Zac efron like was being interrogated right not interrogated i hated that woman yeah she was so bad and yeah. it was uh the the long-haired guy yeah. the assassin it yeah. was him saying that like i didn't capture her for a reason yeah like, he's she's gonna come here mm-hmm. and like she's she special yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay good so I, like you didn't, I didn't miss no, a whole lot no, then okay, i thought you, meant you fell asleep when they they got picked got, up by the no 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 you no. would have missed a good Chunk, chunk of no. I saw their their dinner and every or like their whenever. Yeah, they were drinking I thought that was pretty. Like I liked that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the with too. the with the guy. Yeah, yeah. I liked man. I liked that. Yeah, I thought the uh, I forgive you was mm-hmm. a little cheesy, but I yeah, it was good cheese. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. there's bad cheese and there's good cheese. Well, because I was, I was like, Gouda. how are they gonna? That was good cheese. How are they gonna <laughs> convince him? That's what I was thinking. How are they gonna convince him that? Like they're not bad people. Well, and she did a. I mean, I uh, doesn't she say I I talked to her last mm-hmm. night or something? Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, that that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, that was cheesy, but it was good cheese. But it was good cheese. Like there's there's mm-hmm. yeah. I've already, I already said it, but yeah, it wasn't like, American slices. It was like a fine provolone or a, a gorgonzola. Sure, a Jarlsberg. This was European cheese. Okay, does oh, she sorry. have the push too? She has all of them. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, because she's got telekinesis too, right? Why doesn't she push the people to take their hazmat things off? Because they're already getting shot. <laughs> well, their well, their eyes were covered with the oh, with the stupid contacts. Uh, that was so dumb. Yeah, it was a, I mean, it makes sense. And then what was dumb was that he tries to push them, and then they're like, <laughs> "Nice try, Zac Efron. We have special contacts," kind of yeah. thing. 
I'm sorry. Was that loud? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have an no, itch. I, I like I, I get the contact stuff because like you have to have a counter and like mm. real realistically speaking, they would have created yeah. a counter to it. It was just the dialogue. That's the bad cheese. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is yeah. that is the bad cheese. Um. But yeah, she has her both of her parents' powers. Yeah. As well as the firepower. Yeah. Which I, it never explains why she has the fire because the doctor that gave him the stuff the Lot serum six. yep who is also red foreman which was awesome <laughs> uh that's somebody's show um it doesn't explain how he knows like mm. uh, like he didn't cre- they yeah because they, they've been on the lamb well no they they like Zac Efron and the wife produced that baby. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, like he, they have it. They, he hasn't been in contact with them. They've been out. Yeah, but yeah. also like if you're creating a serum, do you just know that? Oh, if two people that have <laughs> sex have a baby, do they just create this nuclear warhead of a child? Right. Like, like, yeah. Like, it's just very confusing of like how he would yeah. conclude that like you need to kill her because she will be yeah. able to nuke and kill everybody on planet earth i also earth. thought that was weird that like the stupid lady that's in charge of the i, I can't she was her. she was really bad i, hated and her. I don't mean like a bad like bad guy no like it was a poorly written character, character yeah. yeah um like but, you hate her but you also hate hate her because of yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And when she was in the chamber with Zac Efron and she's like, remember, if you kill one of us, you kill both of us. Which is not true. But I'm like, and she was like hugging Zac Efron. And I'm like, he just pushed her to kill both of you guys. They're not dumb. Like, neither one of these people are dumb. You keep saying the same thing. Yeah. Anyway. And yeah, her I agree. Acting I thought- was bad and her dialogue was bad and her i didn't like her at all i felt like they were trying to go for a uh like um suicide squad Mm -hmm. uh the black lady in oh yeah suicide squad yeah Uh, oh yeah and uh like it's a evil character that's like dealing with superpower bad people viola davis no that's the actress but it's okay it doesn't matter um we know who we're talking about yeah okay. and it and it didn't she wasn't good enough no. she yeah. wasn't good enough no. the writing wasn't good enough for that character it was just mm-hmm. it was was just poor all around there's also a sexual tension be- between her and the assassin mm-hmm. which was misplaced and never yeah. like dealt with um i didn't recognize that realize it whatever mm. but um Okay, she makes this point to go and talk to the guy that created the serum or whatever, right? Yeah. And doesn't do anything in the end. Yeah. Yeah. And then he just shows up and then gets caught on fire. Like, wait, what? Sorry, what? He shows up and gets caught on fire. I thought that was him. Uh, Who? Oh, I thought he was in the building, a part of the people that she. I think I vaguely remember that. Burned, whatever. I thought that was or, him. So, there was like it a might group have been of so, people. I remember seeing someone like that. I think he might just look like him, but I know what, okay. what you're talking about. Well, regardless, it didn't, he either it didn't, got got just out of nowhere or he didn't do anything. I don't yeah. think he did anything. I think it was supposed to be to like progress the story and like tell you about, but it was very poorly done. Yeah. It, it, it made you leave that he was like either going to help the child or be the reason why she died. <laughs> yeah. And in the end, it didn't do Because shit. he's a child. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a very good water news. Sorry. It's okay. It Wait, yeah. What do we think of the cat? <laughs> I, that was I, so sad. I think the burn mark stuff was all good. I think, like, yeah. They I, looked... Oh they looked yeah. fucked up. The oh the cat. The burns. All of them. Oh yeah. Uh the mom, the cat, and oh, the, yes. the mom's yeah. arms caught on fire. I was like, what? Yeah. It's very hereditary. And, yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too. And then when she was like, it was supposed to be you. Yeah, that oh, was her rough. Yeah. So rough. I looked at Easton like <laughs> But also oh. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well I remember seeing like, the the cat. I would totally be on Zach Efron's side there, but like 
as a child, I would definitely like understand like yeah, being mad at my dad because she's like pushing or he's pushing me, and like I'm a child and emotional and like telling me I need to be better, and my mom is like trying to comfort me, mm. so like I'd be more like. Oh, also, I know what you're saying. But also, like, I understood where Zac Efron was coming from the whole time, especially because all of the brain him, like, well, yeah, hemorrhaging but, like, he was dealing with. So, like, I, I, I get it. Yeah. I I was less sympathetic uh, to Zach. Him, yeah. Yeah. Which they, they did a, it was a detriment, like, they wrote his character being way too hard. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, he should have been hard, but they went too. Yeah, they, they went a little I overboard. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think I gave this movie a lot of like slack that it probably shouldn't have. That sometimes I give movies a lot of slack, and sometimes I don't. I think I gave this movie a little bit more slack. Mm. Yeah, so, I gave it less. Yeah, which is, like that's. But I also went in with expectations, it. and they so maybe that's what it was. Yeah, I definitely didn't come in with that many yeah. expectations because uh, like. The Pet Cemetery stuff wasn't very good. Mm. And so, like, that's kind of the mindset I was going into it was, like... Yeah. The Stephen King movies usually aren't... A bless Great. Yeah. So, Unfortunately. Sure. I think they're cool premises, but as movies, for some reason, they well, just... Well, and I think not every Stephen King movie needs to be made... Or book needs to be made into a movie. Like, mm-hmm. he... I think what he it has is... has a huge... I think what it is is... They're good books and not good movies. Well, he, I, that's what I'm saying is he has this huge catalog. He's written like 600 books or something. He's written so many. Like they're not all going to transfer. And I think what mo- what they try to do is they try to slap on the, oh, from the from best-selling author Stephen King. And then that's supposed to rope people in because they think, oh, it. Oh, Pet Cemetery, Oh, Suspiria. And I don't the, think so serious. I, I know. I was trying to make a call back to an earlier, oh, okay, that earlier okay. joke. Thank you. You're welcome. His movies are The Shining. What the, the fuck? The Shining, oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, The Shining. Yeah. yeah. And um, he hate, he hates Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of it. Oh, he made yeah. his own that is oh, really? significantly worse. Yeah. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Sleep. Stanley in, Kubrick's in amazing. The, yeah. In the Tall Grass, 1922, Pet Cemetery, The Dark Tower, which everyone hated that movie, uh, Gerald's Game. It, uh, a good ma- man. They really do make. Oh, turn of the corn. The mist. The mist. Yeah. Carrie is. Ha. Ha. Good job. We did it. Woo. High five. Boom. <laughs> um. Wow. He's done. All- Children of the corn. Is Stephen King? I said. I just said that. Oh, sorry. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, the Green Mile. Oh yeah. Anyways, so yeah, they really do make pretty much every, not every, <laughs> but a lot. The Shawshank Redemption of Stephen King? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Well, I guess that's what it is. They have some bangers. <laughs> yeah. Like, Misery is great. Uh, the Shining is great. It is great. Shawshank Redemption is great. Shawshank Redemption is great. Children of the Corn? What the fuck? That's not very good. Don't watch <laughs> that. You said that. <laughs> I did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said it first, and I said I just said that, man. <laughs> Stand by me. That does not seem like a. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. I just the, maybe it's just like there are tears. I told you, man. He just writes and writes and writes and writes. I think there's just tears of Stephen King movies. Probably there's Stephen King movies that have like the high budget stuff. Yeah, which are like um, I can get the actors like the Morgan Freemans and the Tom Hanks. Yeah, it Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile. Uh, Stand by me. The Jack Nicholsons. Um, the Shining. I said The Shining. It. It. Uh, Carrie. It. Carrie. But then you have like the B movie ones like Maximum Overdrive <laughs> and Children of the Corn and Firestarter. Firestarter <laughs> and Pet Cemetery. The original Pet Cemetery I remember enjoying. I I mm-hmm. do too, but it's, mm-hmm. I also like it looks like it's a B movie. It's definitely a B movie. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's what I'm saying though is like his movie adaptations get like w- tears. Sure. Like yeah. there are movies that get the A list like uh, treatment. We're and the ones that get the like we know this is not gonna be a 
great movie adaptation. So we're just going to like, here's. I have a question. Here's $150,000 to make the movie. That's it. What, Tristan? Um, you know, when, um, she brings the guy in the car yeah. and then she was like, I'm not, you I don't want to hurt you. Someone, you have to finish it. That's the consequence yeah. to your actions that her dad said to her because of the cat. Yeah. Do you think that she should have went ahead and killed him or not? A hundred percent. Yeah. I think I was asleep. Oh, Really? Oh, okay. You think she should have killed him? Oh, yeah. Mm. He would have died a- eventually. Really? He was 100% like skin burned down to bone. And I, that, Only like- that sounds like that would, would be the premise of the cat scene regardless. Would it be to set it up later to have it happen yeah, with a human? Yeah, I understand that. But I just don't. No, I also feel like she didn't have any emotion. Like when she killed the cat, she was like yeah. freaking out. And then when she killed an actual human being, she was like, this is the consequence that I have to pay for my actions. <laughs> I agree with that. I, I agree with that. It was weird. And I, I think what they were trying to do was she, um, uh, like she was like being ruthless because she's trying to, get yeah. her dad back yeah but i do agree that they were like very heartless with her character yeah toward the end yeah mm-hmm. which which once he does the the past not the past the zach efron does the push yeah. mm-hmm. oh, yeah. on her like mm-hmm. that kind of makes sense because like he's told her like yeah altered her brain to make it where she just wants to murder everybody so that makes a little bit more sense but right but that was before that exactly was, yeah. that's what i'm saying like yeah, yeah. that should have had heart and then you see later on after the push mm-hmm. that's when the heart like there is no yeah. more yeah. emotion to it right so. yeah. okay good gravy i did like that scene for the most part the car scene I yeah didn't. i didn't like how it ended yeah. I liked the car scene up into that, but I thought him pulling the gun on her mm. and th- th- what led to all that was yeah, a little honestly, st- stupid. I, I forgot that he. That's why he she did it. Yeah, I know. I know that. But I, when I was thinking about the scene, I forgot that that was why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. I don't I have too much. I have nothing else more. I don't think. You got anything? Um I guess not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. really like the assassin as uh little as he was really used. I think th- I I did like him okay. Yeah. I think the only problem I had was that cuz I said I think he needed to talk more. But I yeah, you said that. I think that's because like we didn't really know him. Yeah, but I think the actor did a good job of like showing his yeah. arc and the limited yeah uh, dialogue he did well, have, yeah, and I'll also just that. his body language and mm-hmm. stuff. And so that's why I yeah, well, that that's why sense. I enjoyed it. Sure. Okay. Um, I also really liked his house with all the boots and the <laughs> I thought that was really mm. really cool yeah thing yeah but yeah it was a it was a yeah okay movie I guess in, yeah in general but I enjoyed it more than I thought I was gonna be you text us and said thumbs fire down. starter three thumbs down yeah and I was like oh this is gonna be bad bad and it wasn't like atrociously bad it was just like yeah, it's not great, but I enjoyed it. So, I thought it was bad. Yeah. No, it was okay. We're going to go to ratings. Cool. We didn't fight as much as I thought we would since you said it was bad, bad. But I don't know if it was bad, bad. I think it was just bad. Because I got it said two. So, like, yeah. there, I mean, there were farts of it that were fine. Nothing was, nothing was good. It was all just fine to bad. Yeah. You said two? Yeah. Mm. I say three. Okay. 
I'm a, I'm at about a, between a two and a half and a three. Mm. So I I think right off the bat I wanted to give it a two and a half. So I think that's probably where I'm gonna stay because I just gave Doctor Strange two a two and a half, which feels on par. Like Doctor Strange like wasn't great, but it was serviceable. I enjoyed this more technically than mm. I enjoyed Doctor Strange two, but I think that was. I also know that I'm going into Marvel movies with a higher expectation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like I don't enjoy Which is it. fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like I like if a Marvel movie isn't great, I'm gonna give it flack yeah. because sure. they're a they, Because you have a zillion much, people working on they're them. They're a two hundred and fifty million dollar project. Yeah, yeah. and much like much like Pixar, good. there's a standard that they they yeah. they put it for themselves that they can't drop below. Yeah. So like I I enjoy like I think they're about equal. Like they have some good stuff and they have some bad stuff. And mm. this, like, Doctor Strange two had some emotional stuff that got to me because I'm, I movies get me more than they should. <laughs> and so did this. There were a couple of moments that got to me and I felt hard more or like sad for the characters. And so mm-hmm. Doctor Strange two, this doesn't have the over the, like, the CGI craziness, but also like that doesn't make a movie good just because things look good for five minutes right but yeah. nonetheless like i i feel like two naps probably where i'm gonna stick with this because i don't think it's like it's not better than mm-hmm. that yeah but at least it's probably the same so sure go cool. uh, i usually don't try to go off of i don't like doing ratings off of what i rated something else but back to back i feel like there I needs to be to. a line somewhere yeah because i know that uh Austin probably isn't listening, but if he is, <laughs> he used to get at me and be like, you have this rated at this, and then you have this rated at this? How do you have this rated higher than this? I was like, I don't know. I rated this when I watched it. Like, yeah. yeah. It was an instinct. And like, maybe mm-hmm. that one's the same level or better, but I just was like, three and a half, and this is a four. And like, There are some movies I look back at my letterbox where I'm like, why did I give that that score? Yeah. I need to watch that again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, me definitely too. real. Oh, mean? yeah. No. She oh. rates something on Letterboxd like once a, a month. Year. You're lucky if I log it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Get on that Letterbox, Tristan. I want to keep up with you. No, you don't. I do. Yeah, we do. Mm. Anyways, so uh, that'll bleed us right into go ahead and follow us at all of our uh, social medias. The movie moron. The number one being Litterbox. You can follow me at East and More IV, uh, both on Litterbox and Twitter. You can follow Trevor at T Landers Burke. Litterbox and Twitter and Instagram. You can find. No, I'm kidding. Tristan <laughs> at. I don't know. <laughs> what? My Letterbox. Your Twitter. Oh. I don't know. It's Tris Tris one zero. Tris yeah. one zero. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure your letterbox is the same. There you go, everybody. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Thanks you guys for listening. And next week we're gonna have a hopefully out of the park horror movie. Men. Oh yeah. Oh please. So uh, stay tuned for next week. Men. A twenty four. What? <laughs> okay. You've seen the Get trailer. it together, okay. Tristan. Uh, I'm super excited. Yes. Uh, it looks really good. Uh, the title seems very uh, progressive, but the movie <laughs> looks fantastic. So, Some of the earlier reviews I've read seem to be pointing in that direction. That Of progressive or fantastic? Uh, both. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it, looks, it looks like anti-men, but also fucking good. That's what so, I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't care if you're, if you're gonna be, whatever, be good. Yeah, and I'm cool with it. Well, whatever, <laughs> just be good in it. Don't just be, be good. Yeah, don't, please don't push an agenda and be shitty and expect uh, praise because you're pushing an agenda. No, make yeah. a good movie. And if you have an agenda, that's okay. <laughs> I remember when 2022 started and like the first four or five movies we did were just blah. Yeah. We're getting into good stuff now. Oh yeah, uh, two weeks ago, last month. Yeah. We had three fantastic movies yeah. all in one weekend. Mm. The bad guys. Oh, Bra- Brandon was upset that we didn't do massive weight of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's because the Northmen came out that way. Uh, yeah, that's that what I said. Yeah. The Northmen, the bad guys, and um, and Ma- massive. the massive way to have unbearable talent all came out. So, <laughs> and I said, are you, he said he's a Pedro Pascal fan, and I said, what about Nick Cage? Are you a Nick Cage fan? And he was like, I like the meme of Nicolas Cage. I was like, well, great, because that's him this whole movie. <laughs> Wait, has he not seen the movie? No. Oh, no. He, he said he was going to, but by the time he went to go see it, it was already out of theaters. Oh, it's still in our theaters. That's wild. Come to Wichita, Brandon. Yeah. Con- fine. Brandon, I know you're listening because you listen to all of our podcasts. He does. He's our, he's, thank you. you. Yeah. He's our number one fan, man. So you wanted you wanted us to do an episode on Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent? Come to Wichita. Watch the movie. And we can do a bonus episode. He'll be here on Friday. Boom. Boom. Done. There you go. Well, not yeah. Friday because we have a party. That's right. It's we our do. birthdays. Woohoo! Party. Not mine. But you're going to be there. Oh yeah. Okay, we're dragging, but yeah, <laughs> we're dragging. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Stay tuned next week for the episode on men, and the week after that, the episode of Top Gun Maverick. Maverick. Let's go. Bob's Burgers. Oh my God. Danger Zone. We're cutting Tristan's thing no. out there. Um, <laughs> Bob's Burgers. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening, and goodbye. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Don't call me stupid. Oh, right! To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people! I've known sheep that could outwit you. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. (laughs) Man, you are one pathetic loser. (laughs) No offense. (laughs) No, none taken.